one, we we have always been able to collect tons of data, and we still have tons of data, not you know, across a variety of different parameters. But the really hard part, and something we haven't talked much about, is making any sense out of it. There is so much data being generated in the world right now. Figuring out what is important, even getting a slight signal out of data, is a, is a terribly complex activity. One thing that is very important is to understand that beauty is a form of communication. It's a way to actually um, reach people in a more direct way. And that it's never a mask for truth, if anything, the opposite. And one salon was devoted to the idea of beauty and to the fear of beauty that sometimes exists outside of the design world, as if it were a form of smoke in people's eyes. It's actually the opposite. In a way, it's the most beautiful magnifying and, and clarifying crystals that one can possibly find. Pretty much, this is by far the largest generation ever. On the basis of their demographic muscle alone, they'll dominate the 21st century. Now, the big feature of youth culture, of course, is media. And at the heart of media is the rise of a new interactive communication medium. There's a generation of hundreds of millions of young people who are growing up using all this interactive technology. Part of this explosion of choices um, and choices like really never before about the brands you engage with and, and the decisions you make. This is the first time in human history when children are an authority about something really important. The 11 year old at the breakfast table in London is an authority on this digital revolution that's changing business, commerce, government, learning, culture, entertainment, every institution in society. I don't think that young people today are different from what young people ever have been in the, in the history of human civilization. What I think is that technology has changed and we now, have, we, we now are allowed and supported in behaviors that people have always wanted to have. We've always wanted to share with each other. We've always wanted to collaborate together. We've always aspired to transparency. The great thing about these services is that if you need to move fast and at a very low cost, you'll do it. And, and this will replace the kind of, you know, uh, unusual world that we're in today where companies who are not in the computer industry have been forced to become computer experts. And this is the shift to the cloud computing where you will just be able to consume that service. why the cloud is good. There are also reasons why they're dangerous. In our computing, we want change. And that's why our computers, these kinds, are so erratic, because they're changing so quickly from so many corners. So what I aspire to is a blend where the stuff that's mission critical, great, put it into these commoditized architectures. But on the consumer side, we need to maintain a vibrant enough infrastructure so that a good idea can spread from one machine to another without having to worry about gatekeepers, whether corporate ones or regulators. Mm -hmm.